grasses in your garden has many benefits. They improve the soil, they're good for wildlife, and they're low maintenance plants. I'm Mary Meyer from the University of Minnesota, talking with you today about the benefits of native grasses. We're going to talk about Sporobolus prairie drop seed. So prairie drop seed is one of the fairly common plants you found in the prairie across the United States, certainly central United States and the mid-Atlantic states. It's not one of the big four grasses we think of in the tall grass prairie. It's fairly common in Minnesota. But today, because of our population growth and the decline of prairies across the United States, prairie drop seed is actually threatened or endangered in several states, especially New England, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. But in Minnesota, we can still find quite a bit of prairie drop seed. Looking here at one form of prairie drop seed that's shorter than the species. This is called Terra, T-A-R-A. Terra is an improved selection of prairie drop seed, just selected from the wild, really, because of its short stature. It's about half the size of the species. So it's, it's shorter, it's more compact. Uh, there are actually two plants that uh, I'm standing beside right here but it's a little easier to use plants that are this size. So you can see them here in the front of a border is a good place to put them. And prairie drop seed loves upland drier sites. So it's not good for heavy clay soils. Uh, it likes a drier sites uh, where you're not watering on a regular basis or sandy lighter soils. Uh, the, top of a berm. You could plant it on the top of a uh, rain garden where it doesn't get um, as much water. Drop seed does like full sun conditions. So even though it will tolerate dry sites like under trees, it doesn't like uh, shady, shady sites. So full sun, front of the border is a good location. Another great feature of prairie drop seed is that this grass is larval food for at least six of our native skipper butterflies. So skippers are endangered in Minnesota because we have less prairie, there are fewer skippers now that we find, but the larvae of skippers, these are really small. I doubt if you're ever really gonna see these, but they're about the size of your fingernail, but they feed on this grass down near the base, and then they emerge as a small skipper butterfly in the springtime. So in the springtime and summer, we find these butterflies on uh, plants nearby, Echinacea, this is uh, uh, hyssop that's here, uh, Calamintha and so on. This is where the adult butterfly can be found, but the larva requires prairie drop seed for development. So planting prairie drop seed in your garden is another way to increase our native skipper butterfly population. Gardens that's part of Three Rivers Parks is a great place to see grasses and perennials. The beautiful gardens here are open to the public most, uh, most of the summer, so it's a great place to see big grasses like this one. Uh, this is Black Hawk's Big Blue Stem. It's quite tall and dark purple in color, so it's in the back of a border here. In the front, here's the Terra Drop Seed, much finer textured and shorter in stature. So these grasses are planted in combination with lots of great perennials here, salvia, foxgloves, calamintha, sage, allium. Many of these are great pollinator plants as well. So planting a variety of perennials in combination with grasses is a great thing to do in your garden. And Nuremberg Gardens is a wonderful place to see great examples of perennials with grasses. For more information, go to the website grasses.cfans.umn.edu.